Hi there guys, my name's Peter. I'd like to tell you a story about where I've been, where I've come from, where I'm going, and I, I hope it'll be uh, something that'll really speak to you. So I was born in Bangkok to a Thai mum and a British dad. Uh, most people in Thailand are Buddhist. It's a huge part of the culture. Uh, I would say most Thai people would consider you less Thai if you weren't Buddhist. <laughs> and my mum was devout. Um, we would go to the temple, we'd burn incense. Uh, she would teach me all the prayers and the mantras. Um, you know, say this one before you cross the road because it will keep you safe. Say this one before you take an exam. Say this one before you go for a job interview so people will like you. Um, and it was just such a big part of my life growing up. Uh, Thai people are really very focused on kind of this very close uh, extended family unit. And I had an especially good relationship with my uncle. Uh, he would often take care of me at the family home. He would uh, sit me down and tell me stories about Buddhism and teach me the ins and outs of being a good Buddhist. I would attribute a lot of who I am today to what he said to me in my formative years growing up. But then my family kind of ran into a little bit of difficulty financially. And we ended up moving around a lot. Um, and we spent some time in different parts of Thailand. We, we moved out of our, our home in Kata. My dad had a job. And eventually we found our way to the UK and to a little town called Toaster in Northamptonshire. And by this point, I was severely alienated. I didn't know where I belonged. I didn't know where home was anymore. Uh, I didn't look Thai, but internally, I still felt like I belonged to that part of the world. And for the first time in my life, Buddhism wasn't the default anymore. I was surrounded by people who had very different perspectives on life. And let me tell you, being a teenager uh, in the UK, uh, having come from an Asian country is a real culture shock. And I kind of fell into despair a little bit. I went from being a formal atheist as a Buddhist to being someone who really, truly believed there was no God and that there was no meaning in life. I became a nihilist at the age of <laughs> like 14, 15. Despite that, I always still had the sense that maybe, just maybe, there was some truth or beauty in the world, but I couldn't explain it, and I thought it was probably just wishful thinking. And this kind of carried me through um, high school and into university, where things picked up, honestly. I, I found loads of distractions. I had the opportunity to try loads of things in university and make loads of friends but I was exactly as lost by the end of the whole experience as I was when I first went. And I was deeply disillusioned about other things that other people had loads of importance in, like partying, like a career, like academics. It just didn't seem very meaningful. I genuinely thought it would be the end for me if I kept doing what I was doing. And so I tried to fix myself up as much as I could. <laughs> and I had a little bit of success. I, I quit my job. I started looking after myself. I started really, really thinking about my life and what I wanted to do and more importantly, who I wanted to be. And so somehow I decided to start reading the Bible. I was doing a lot of thinking about the meaning of life and I was still kind of struggling to understand Western culture that I'd kind of just been dropped in. And so I thought, a good place to start was on this book that was apparently so important. And so I decided to really give it a shot. I met loads of Christians at university who weren't the best spokespeople for the faith. Um, and I kind of came away with quite a diluted understanding of what it meant to be Christian, about what Christianity was. But I decided to come to the Bible with open eyes and an open heart and just really Consider it in isolation from everything I thought about Christianity, about everything I'd previously experienced. We had a little bit of Christian culture in our household because my dad is uh, kind of Church of England. And we would celebrate Christmas in our house. And I always was intrigued by the idea of a God that came down to be with his people. But I didn't really spare much thought past that. 
But reading through the Gospels really forced me to think about Jesus as a real person, a person of authenticity. And that just really came through. And what most struck me about what he was talking about was what he had planned <laughs> about the world to come, about the end of suffering, about the end of death. And these were two things that were really preying on my mind all through my adolescence, all through university. They seemed like two problems that just could not be fixed. But here was a man who seemingly was promising the impossible. And I asked myself, what if this was real? What if he actually had the ability to do this? And as soon as that question entered my head, I knew, I knew it was true. It was too good to be false. And this feeling overcame me. Uh, and I broke down in tears and I fell to my knees and I prayed, and I prayed my heart out and I knew that everything would be different from then on. I did some Googling and I found a Baptist church uh, at Adelaide Place in Glasgow. And that was the church I got baptized in. It was the church I met my wife in. And it was there that I found community. I found a place where I belong. I found a place of people who were like-minded, who genuinely believed that there was something good and beautiful and true in the world, in the universe. Despite the lifestyle changes I've had to make, I've gained so much. My life has never been more meaningful. I have family and community. I have meaning. I have hope. No amount of suffering or difficulty can take away from me. Because I have God and I'm a different person. I want to say to you, if you're listening to this and you're, you're kind of tired of the way that you're living, you know, the pandemic has taken away so much from people and I think people are realizing that you can't hang your life on nights out or friendships or holidays or a career. If you feel like nothing really fills that hole where something deeper should be. You know, if you, you have a sense that there's something true and there's something beautiful out there. I just want to say that, you know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. He'll always be here for you. And he's always offering you hope. Leave aside your preconceptions about what Christianity is, about who Jesus was, and just really reach out to him. And I think, I know that he will respond like it did for me.